Well, welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is pre-calculus. Uh, we are in chapter two, and uh, the section that we're working on is dealing with power functions and uh, and variations. Uh, the examples that I'm working with, uh, for the most part, are coming from the pre-calculus book by Demana Waits Foley Kennedy, the fifth edition. Uh, no reference to the musical group from the '60s uh, with Marilyn McCoo. And uh, so. We are already working with power functions, and just a reminder, power functions are functions that uh, follow this basic format. Uh, you can use different letters uh, for the different uh, parts of this. I think the book may use uh, kx to the a, but all of this means the same thing. Basically, the exponent needs to be a number. Uh, there needs to be a, a constant out front in some of some sort. It can be one, uh, it can't be zero. Uh, so, and that needs to be a number. And again, if it's not written, it's assumed to be one, and that's fine. And then the other big issue is it needs to have a base that is a variable. Okay, so the exponents can be positive or negative. They can be fractions, uh, unlike for a monomial. Okay. All right, well, I just want to spend a little bit of time here. I think I have three or four examples that we're going to blaze through. And uh, this one is pretty straightforward. It's got a lot of reading, so that sometimes scares people. But this one happens to be from page 185 uh, in the book, and it's uh, number 52. Um, Charles' Law, which I believe is a chemistry thing, uh, volume of an enclosed gas uh, varies directly as the absolute temperature. Well, you can read this. I'm going to nitpick read it, uh, kind of pick through what I need to catch out of this. The volume of an enclosed, glass, uh, enclosed gas at constant pressure, volume varies directly as equals K times direct variation means multiplication as the absolute temperature, well, absolute temperature, I guess I'll use T for that, uh, and absolute gives me the impression that I want a big, a big T, uh, capital T. Uh, so uh, we're talking about Kelvin. Uh, and, and so this, this is the equation. Now, if it would have said something about the square of the, pres of the temperature, then we would have done T squared. If it would have said inversely, we would have been dividing by T. This is the main equation that we're going to work with for the rest of the time in this problem. If the pressure of a 3.46 liter uh, sample of neon gas at. Now, we don't have anything about pressure in our equation. We don't have anything about um, the volume either in our equation. So those are non-issues. We're going to assume that they're held constant. Okay, and it says uh, if the pressure doesn't change and it's uh, and et cetera. Okay, so I'm looking then at this is a temperature. And this is a pressure, and again, we don't need the pressure, but we do need, um, oh, I do need that volume. Sorry, I misspoke. Okay, so the volume of this thing, so 3.46 equals K, I don't know the K, times temperature, so 3.02. And really, all I'm using, I'm using this initial stuff, okay, so that's volume. I'm using this initial information to find a value for K. And then in a minute, what I'll be doing is looking at this temperature and then trying to find a new volume for it. Okay, so that, that's what's going to happen in a minute. Okay, so 3.46 equals K times 302. I'm just going to divide by uh, 302. Okay, so K is 0 0.011456. Now, the question always comes up, do I have to write all that? No, you don't. But you do have to use what's in your calculator. We do not want to round intermediate answers. Okay? So volume equals, what would the volume be? Okay. Uh, volume equals 0 0.011 times the new temperature. And the new temperature, we are told, is 338. So we just type this into the calculator. Now, probably worth notice, noting here that I'm not going to use 0 0.011. I'm not going to use 0 0.01. I'm going to use what my calculator uh, thinks is the last answer. Now, on the new system, you can grab that just by, uh, actually, you can even do it on the old system. Just hit times, and it'll take whatever that last answer is, times 338. 
the other option is, is you can type the second key, and then right above the negative, it says answer. So it's actually going to take your last answer times 338, and so get in the habit of not rounding. You don't want to round until the very end. Uh, 3.87, and this is in uh, liters. This is a, a volume. Okay. 3.87 or 3.872 if we're going three decimal places, which is what I normally do. Okay. All right. So I don't typically work in significant digits, sig figs. Uh, I know that's a, that's a little bit more of a science thing. Math people typically do decimal places, and usually I ask for three. Okay. So 3.872 works, and that's in liters if units are appropriate, and if you know them, please put them. Okay. Next example. All right. One more idea in the various uh, plan. We already have uh, direct variation, so like y equals k times x to the n. We have inverse variation, which is y equals k divided by x to the n. And we're just going to add one more to it, and that is joint variation, or varies jointly as. And the idea here is we, we could still have a constant, and we could still have x to the n, but we might have another variable, like for, uh, no, I can't use y because I already have a y there, sorry. This would be y not. Uh, so I might do z to the m or something like that. So varies jointly means it's a direct variation with more than one independent variable. So it's direct and direct. It's direct with both. Okay, so we have multiplication, we have multiplication. Okay. So quick example, and again, this is obviously uh, parallel to the examples we worked with last time. I'm just going to write down the wording. Okay, so here it comes. The weight a board can support. Oh, I didn't want that. I want, I'm going to do weight in pounds again. I think I did this last time. The weight, I don't want to use W because width is involved. Okay, so number of pounds varies jointly. Okay, so automatically it's equals K times, and there will be another times in there somewhere, with its width and the square of its thickness. Well, yesterday, or last time, uh, on the last video, we actually saw this as two separate relationships. Well, this lets me put it together as a single relationship. So it varies jointly with width and square of its thickness. After this, the process is the same. Start dropping the numbers in. It says uh, an, a board eight feet long. Well, there's no length in here, and we're assuming that it's going to stay the same, and it does. Okay, so a board eight feet long, four inches wide, and two inches thick can support 200 pounds. Okay, so this is for some certain kind of board. Okay, well, four times four is 16. Okay, so K would have to equal 200 divided by 16, 12.5. Okay, so that, that's the K. So now we're going to use this K. So Y equals 12.5 times W times T squared. And you don't really need that times there. If, if, you, if that bugs you, don't, don't put it. All right, so now it says, how much weight could a board support, uh, could a board that's 8 feet long, and again, that's just constant, 4 inches wide, okay, so... Oh, I'm not supposed to be doing Y here. I'm supposed to be doing P. I'm sorry, P for pounds. So how much weight? So we're going to find P. Okay, and when it's 4 inches wide and 3 inches thick. Just worth noting that since the T is squared, the T has to be squared all, all along the way. Okay, and all you just need to do is type that in. So 450. Okay, and again, uh, in a science class, they would probably want you to keep track of your units all the way through this thing. And so, uh, just a, a quick little note, if this is in inches, and if this is inches squared, all together, this is inches cubed. This was pounds. So K, when we divide by the inches cubed, this would be pounds per inches cubed. And, and again, I'm not really going to worry about that 
uh, until I get to the very end. And once I multiply by my pounds per inches cubed and my constant and all that stuff, all the inches are going to cancel out. I'm going to be right back to pounds. Okay? All right. So varies jointly is direct more than once. Okay? Um, this is a problem from, uh, again, in section two. This is from, from page 184. And this is uh, number 28, I believe. And basically, the, this, is, this is saying there's a power function that will generate all these values. Now, just a reminder that a power function is in this form. And I need a number for k. I need a number for n. And supposedly, that will make all of this, all these values work. Well, basically, what happens is you need to drop some values in here for what you know. Well, we know some x and y values. And so, for instance, if I put 1 in for x, I would have uh, k times 1 to the n. And that would equal the y value that goes with it. Okay. And then I can also do that again for another ordered pair. So, like, so I might use this ordered pair. So, negative 4 is the y value. k times 4 to the n. Now, you can do this a number of different ways in terms of how you set this up, but basically the situation is this. Like in Algebra 1 and even Algebra 2, when we do substitution and elimination, all that stuff, you have a system of linear equations, usually, uh, all degree 1 and stuff. Well, this one has an exponent. So instead of adding equations to cancel things out, what we end up doing is actually dividing equations to cancel things out. So I'm going to divide both sides of this top equation by the same thing. But I'm not going to write it the same. I'm going to divide by negative 4 on one side, and I'm going to divide by k times 4 to the n on the other side. So I am dividing both sides by the same thing because they're equal things. Okay, and so this is how this is going to look. Well, negative 2 divided by negative 4 is, you guessed it, 1 half. These k's divide out. So this becomes 1 to the n over 4 to the n. Well, there is a little property that says if you have two things raised to the same exponent in the numerator and denominator, you can actually treat that as the whole thing, the whole fraction, raised to that power. Okay, so this is 1 fourth to the n. So I guess the question now is, what power did we raise 1 fourth to? to get n, or I'm sorry, to get 1 half. Well, what you may realize is that 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. There, there's a more technical way to do this. I just, I think you're going to be better off just kind of eyeballing this right here. Okay, and, you know, just, so if, if I would square this to get that, what would I do to that? to go back. Well, I guess it's square root. So the question is, how do you write square root as an exponent? And that is 1 half. Okay, so the idea again is the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. That's the same thing as 1 fourth to the 1 half power, the square root, equals 1 half. Okay, all right, so the, the n is 1 half. Well, if n is 1 half, then I should be able to do something like for uh, take that one half and put it in. So like negative four equals k times four to the one half. Well, four to the one half is the square root of four, which is two. So negative four equals k times two. If I divide both sides by two. Okay. Now remember what the goal is. The goal was to write the equation it would produce this. So the equation ought to be y equals k times x to the 1 half to the n. Okay, so there it is in all of its excitement and glory. Okay, and I just want to um, do a little something to draw attention to the answer there. Okay, well, that's where I'm going to leave it right now. I just wanted to make sure we did another example of normal direct or, or inverse variation. Uh, we did talked about joint variation, and we found a power function starting with a set of points.
thank you so much for watching.